Hey guys, so we've been talking a lot about Roger Waters Bates, H2O Tackle. He's a genius. But this is kind of the pull bait category. We've been talking about all the crank baits and stuff. And this is interesting. It's called a Warthog ST. Now, there's a Warthog and there's a hammerhead. Can't show the hammerhead there, but the hammerhead's basically a giant version of this. So it kind of looks stupid. I thought so too. It is anything but. This is a very, very intelligent design. But let me show you why. Check this out. So it's, once again, ironically, it's almost literally the same body design as the Cranky Nitro and the Switchback. I know, right? Like, does that look familiar at all? But literally, what's the difference between these three baits? The shape and placement of the lips. So there's the Cranky Nitro. It's a crankbait. This is the Switchback. Same body design. The lip comes in more at an angle and like basically in the curve of the bait. So you can kind of draw the line. And then he took the same body design and he put a big square bell in the front. So, I mean, if you just looked at it, you'd be like, well, it's crankbait. No, well, no, it's not. Watch this. This is a very, very unique bait. This is the default. No weight in it. And you can see every time I pull it, it goes to the other side. And it's got that neat little tail on it. And that's the cool thing, actually. I just traded the tails out because the tail placement on these Warthog STs, which are really neat baits, uh, it's a screw. It's a screw with a little center pin. So you can literally unscrew and try different soft plastics on it. I like the curly tails because they don't fight against the smooth pulling action as opposed to like a paddle tail. But these soft curly grubs like this, and especially I'll tell you this, my experience, sometimes they'll use the little small ones like the little McGumbo grubs. I like to use bigger ones on these and I'll trade them out. Something with a little bit more of a rudder, a little bit more of a base. So a lot of the ones they come with, they're kind of small, which is fine. But I've noticed a lot of times if I put like a bigger tail on it, like these, and that one got chewed up the other day, so trade it out. It gives a little bit more directive whenever it's turning. It can almost get out from under you like some of the other baits. And when you put that bigger tail on it, it still has that jankiness, but it gives it a little bit more control. And here's where things get fun. Once again, like almost 90% of his baits, it's got weight placements. And this is cool in the fact that like the bigger switchback, it's got one on the head, one in the middle. Start with the head. So as you can imagine, when you screw the weight in here, now you're pointing it down head first. And it's a slow rise, very slow rise, perfect. But because you're putting the head weight down like that, it's not going to swing out as much. It's going to dive deeper, but it's not going to swing out quite as much. Part of the reason I put that bright tail on there too, so you guys can see it. Now it's a pull bait with a really nice suspending action. But it doesn't swing out too far to the side. It just kind of pulls down. Sometimes you want that. What if you don't want that? What if you want to be able to get down a little bit more, not have to worry about it rising up all the time super fast, but you still want to do the swing? But I just showed you. Just check this out. Take the weight, move from the front of the head, put on the midline. Now. That weight in the front is not pulling this thing down like this, so it's just getting the surface area of the head pointing down, making a dive. Now it's sitting more at an angle, 